Be kind, be patient, be understanding. Sometimes disabilities are invisible. It's important to be kind to one another as we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. Today in our lounge, we see what not to do and how not to be. You can't be disabled, you're too young. Give me your seat. TW slurs against disabled people. This happened last night and I was too worked up to write about it at the time. But now that it's morning and I'm still hurt, I need to air it all out. For some background information, I'm 30, but still look like I'm in my 20s. With severe chronic pain in my back, that makes it hard for me to get around without the use of a cane and some other support and unable to lift anything weighing more than 10 pounds. I have autism, which makes it harder for me to function properly when I get overwhelmed and severe anxiety that kicks in when that happens. We still don't know what's wrong and I've been bounced around from doctor to doctor and tried every kind of way to relieve the pain apart from surgery because they need to find out what's wrong before determining if that's an option and stuff like healing crystals. My pain made it too difficult to keep my job of five years come the start of the pandemic, so I've been on public health for the last year once my work insurance ran out, but haven't been able to find a physical therapist in the area that takes my public insurance until recently. This incident happened after my first appointment since having to be on public health. Never have I hated being disabled with a mostly invisible disability more than yesterday. My car was having issues and my family was busy at the time, so I needed to take the bus to and from a physical therapy appointment. And on the way home last night, I get this 50 to 60 something old lady, EP, gets on, sees that there aren't any spare seats, zeroes in on me and starts berating me for pretending to be injured. She's seen my cane. And to stand and give her the seat, I was in because she needed it more than some insolent brat pretending to be a cripple for attention and how this is what was wrong with young people these days. I tried to explain that I use my cane to help get around because my back is injured and that I'd just finished a physical therapy appointment that left me in more pain than usual because they were stress testing to see what my limits were, since it was the first appointment, and wasn't going to be able to stand for the remaining 20 minutes of my trip back home, and EP wasn't having it. She just accuses me of lying because I'm too young to have anything serious like that, then ripped my cane out of my hands and tossed it to the back of the bus telling me to stop pretending to be a gimp, get off my lazy butt and give her the seat. Without my cane, it's very difficult for me to get up from a sitting position, especially if I'm in pain and there's nothing around for me to use my arms on to help push myself up. But I need that cane back and I'm feeling embarrassed and humiliated and having flashbacks to my old job because one of my managers would also accuse me of faking my injury and fought me every step of the way whenever I'd have to bring in a note from my doctor regarding accommodations. But I've never had to experience someone slinging slurs and insults at me before, especially when it comes to disabilities. EP keeps berating me and continue to demand I get up and stop faking and that I'm just lazy and probably claiming disabilities for drug money so now I'm a useless junkie and she'll be reporting me to the state for fraud. I'm shaking and on the verge of tears and at this point I just want to leave the bus completely and call home to see if anyone can come pick me up because this was the last bus for the night. So I struggle to get to my feet intending to use the seats as support on the way to the back of the bus until I can get my cane but my legs give out just a wave of pain flares up through my back and I end up falling forward and onto my face. EP jumped out of the way and accused me of trying to attack her, so she gave me a kick to my side, screaming that I need to be thrown off the bus and arrested. The next bit is mostly a blur because I was in tears at this point from the humiliation and the impact from the fall just made the pain worse with the kick added on top, so I wasn't able to focus on anything other than that, but apparently at that point, several other passengers got up, some of them to help me up and check on me, some to yell at EP. My cane was brought back to me by one of them and I clutched it tight like Linus in his blanket whenever Snoopy would try to take it. There was a lot of shouting and screaming, which along with the pain was overwhelming me and I had shut down at this point, and the driver had even come up to join in. Eventually she kicked EP off the bus for the disturbance and EP apparently needed to be dragged off by two of the other passengers, screeching the whole time that I was faking it and that I was dangerous and how dare they do this to her. Once she was off and the two people that got her out were back on. The driver closed the doors and came over to where I was sitting to check on me while EP banged on the doors demanding to be let back in. The driver asked if I was okay, if I needed to go to the hospital, needed to contact anyone, or if I wanted to have the police called on EP. I just cried and said I just want to go home and that I was sorry for causing everyone so much trouble, saying that I'd try to find my way back home on my own so EP could just take the seat and that I was sorry for the incident. I just kept crying and saying I'm sorry over and over and tried to get back up to leave. But the driver put her hands on my shoulders, sat me back down, and calmly said that she wasn't going to let EP back on even if I left. You didn't do anything wrong, she said. EP is the one that was disruptive and violent, and I won't be letting her back on regardless of your decision. 
She explained that if I was sure that I didn't want to be on the bus anymore and didn't want police involved, she'd drop me off at the next stop so that I wouldn't be alone with EP while I waited for a ride. I was struggling to get my emotions back under control and just repeated, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and I want to go home over and over. And she eventually nodded and went back to her spot up front and drove off. The whole time this was happening, EP was still hammering the doors and trying to yank them back open, screeching like a banshee. I ended up staying on the bus until we reached the stop at my neighborhood and hobbled off the bus. The driver said something to me, but I don't know what it was, probably asking if I was okay to get home by myself now that I've had time to think on it, because I was in shutdown mode and just wanted to get home, curl up with my cats in bed and cry. I can barely remember getting back home, and my cats could tell there was something wrong, so as soon as I was in my room, they hopped onto my bed, and one curled up against my back, and the other laying on my side, both purring and trying to comfort me while I curled into a ball and cried myself to sleep. It's now morning, EP's kick hurt for sure, but there wasn't any bruising when I checked after I woke up, so luckily it looks like there wasn't any damage done, but I still feel hurt and humiliated over the whole incident. I already hate that my disability prevents me from being able to do a lot of things, and how hard the struggle to try to not only find out what's wrong with me, but is also how hard it's been trying to get back to normal, as well as how long I've been trying to do all of this. My entire day basically is scheduled around how well or how poorly I'm able to manage the pain, and I've had to cancel more attempts to hang out with my friends than I'd like to admit, so it hurts being told that I'm faking it. And even if she didn't think I was faking, EP casually throwing around cripple and all the rest hits hard because there's a part of me that gets angry at myself for having my disability and calls me the same insults. So it's really stung hearing those words coming from someone else who seems to refer to people with disabilities like that. I just wish I didn't have any of this. Because I was told in a previous post that I should have this at the end, TLDR, I took the bus home, got yelled at by someone who thought I'd been pretending to be disabled because I'm too young to have physical and invisible disabilities and kicked when I collapsed on the ground after my cane was thrown away because EP thought I was trying to attack her. Cat tax. ETA, I'm doing my best to respond to everyone, but I'm sorry if I don't manage to reply. This got more attention than I thought it would. For those of you that have suggested contacting the police now that I've been able to think, I'm talking with the transit company to see if they had any cameras on the bus or if it was reported at all. I'll make an update if anything comes to this. Unfortunately, while retail work and lifeguard jobs have made it easier for me to stand up for myself or my staff, and I'm not shy about confronting people when it comes to others, when I'm in pain, my ability to tell people off goes down, especially if it's out of the blue and overwhelming like this was, hence why I didn't tell OP to go pound sand. Finally, for those asking about medical history, I've been to a ton of doctors in the past 10 or 11 years since the back first started having issues, passed around each time they couldn't come up with a solution, and at this point, the visits have just kind of blurred together, especially since when this first started, my family were the only ones dealing with it on the conditions that I pay at least part of the medical bills, and I just don't really recall the specifics of it all. There is a post in the comments where I explain the areas of the pain and describe them the best I could at the time, but I want to add on one last thing. With the burning pain I mentioned in the comment, I'm not able to tell if it's different from the burning feeling that you get if your muscles get pulled tight or twisted like the way kids would twist their arms. For the longest time, I couldn't even point out where the pain was other than saying it was clearly on the spine, and only after some therapy, before my old insurance ran out, was I able to identify those three locations. Thank you all for your support and your kind words. It means a lot, especially when I already feel like a burden just for having the disability. I hate having to rely on others because it makes me feel like I owe them a debt, even if it's something as simple as holding the door open for me. So being disabled really messes with my head because I now have to come to terms with the fact that I can't handle everything on my own anymore and that I need to rely on others for help, especially if I want to get better. I was the kind of kid that would stubbornly try to run and jump after having my foot in a full cast after it broke falling off a jungle gym, true story, rather than use the crutches that were given to me, and that stubbornness has unfortunately stuck with me, though I am trying to work past it. ETA 2 So I took her advice and contacted the transit authorities the day after the incident and I have good news and bad news. Honestly. I've been sitting on this for a day and haven't wanted to bring this update forward because, well, good news before the bad news. The good news is that the bus did have cameras on it and police have gotten involved. My driver submitted an incident report about it and it sounds like she tried to file a report with the police on my behalf later too. The bad news is that the company scrubbed the recordings, though it sounded like it was by mistake and my understanding is that the morning crew that either took the bus or were supposed to go through the videos ended up wiping the day's contents per some policy to save on storage space. So right now, the police only have a description to work on rather than an actual image of who to look for. 
It's not the ending to this that any of you were hoping for, and it clearly wasn't the one I was hoping for either. All we can do is cross our fingers and hope that someone on the bus had their phone out or that she gets found some other way. My family wasn't happy to hear this happened, but I just told them that I didn't want anything to be brought up against the bus company because it's not like anything would magically make their recordings come back, and I feel like whoever caused them to get deleted before they could make it to the police is going to be in hot water with the company no matter what we do, and I'd rather not make that worse. I wanted to hold off on an update until I'd gotten some kind of news, and when I got that on Friday, I didn't even know if it was worth making this small of an update as a second post. If anything changes, I'll put all the edits to this and whatever new information comes in a second post. But as of right now, it's looking like this is where things end. I'm sorry. KVMan987 has a first reaction. I also am sorry you went through this. I'm 6'4", 210 pounds, tattooed and look healthy, but I have back injuries, emphysema, and more that qualify me as disabled. People only care about what they see. Stop apologizing for yourself. You are a valuable human. Downtown Age 9108 says, EP is an absolute dick. You're a far better person than that old nag. Try an endocrinologist. The one here in Ireland sorted my aunt who suffered for years, but you need to get a good one. Oh God, OP. I'm so sorry this happened to you. My heart breaks for you. It's disgusting to think that people like this woman exist out there. You have nothing to be sorry for. You did absolutely nothing wrong. This disgusting wretched woman will get hers in the end. I hope she never finds a seat on a bus ever again. The transit system should have taken the details of what this woman looked like from you and the driver and posted it in every bus to not let her on again. I'm not even sure if that's a thing. It really upsets me how people these days are really so out of themselves that they can't stop and empathize with what others are going through. People automatically just judge and assume. So we don't know what this lady was going through, but violence and assault are never okay and should never be tolerated. I wish more people had said something on the bus to this woman before it escalated. What are your thoughts? Do you have a similar story to share? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for joining us today on Our Lounge. Before you go, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you have something you want to say regarding today's content, share that with us in the comments below. See you next time.